how are you? This is our meditation session. It's our fifth and last one of this series. And we've looked at a number of different modalities in terms of relaxation response and being able to undo the cumulative results of stress, which are so damaging to the body, as well as unsettling the mind and creating poor decision making in all aspects of our life. So we've looked at a number of different modalities, and some of you have been indicating to me that you have preferred one over the other, and that's exactly the purpose of the series that you, you be able to find some format of meditation that is able to suit you, both in terms of personality, both in terms of style, and what it hopes to achieve as such. Tonight, what we're dealing with is yet another kind of modality, one that's not commonly utilized, but yet it's a very powerful one. And it focuses on our five senses. Now, what are the senses? I like to look at our senses as being our five antennae. In other words, we have antennas that reach out and have a look at the uh, ground in front of us, the landscape in front of us, the uh, mental landscape, the emotional landscape. Of course, like all other modalities, it is able to remove the mind from the stressor because your focus and thoughts are on what the direction is being instructed. And as we learned the wonderful teaching of Hasidus that we are unable to think of two things at the same time, God created us in such a way that that is impossible. We can't even say two things at the same time. You can say one thing and think another thing, and yes, you can do two things, one with each hand, but you can't think of two things at the same time, which is a wonderful boon to us, because what we want to do is displace negative thinking and implant in its stead positive thinking. How do we do that? As an act of choice. If I decide in my mind, right now, I want to focus on something I can focus on it. Yes, the previous thought might come and keep interrupting us, but depending on our willpower and our commitment, we're able to maintain intensity of any current focus. So I want to repeat over and over again, it is a matter of choice. And each one of you has the capacity to choose to focus on something in the place of something else. Of course, if the image or the subject matter is sufficiently captivating, then it's easier to keep that focus. So that if it's colorful, or if it is in some tantalizing some way, whether to, as we'll see tonight, the senses or otherwise, then we're able to maintain that focus. And focus is important. We learn in our Hasidic teachings that we have these three aptitudes that are located in our mind operation. We have Chochmah, the ability to create a thought, to give birth to a thought, to bring it from subconsciousness to consciousness, to, keep, to allow us to become aware that we are beginning to think about something. That's the Chochmah aptitude that we possess. The koachma, if we take the two Hebrew words that make up the Hebrew word chokhmah, the potential of anything, koachma, chokhma. Then we have a second phase, because you can't be just the sparking mechanism, sparking thoughts all over the place and never developing them, never developing a train of thought. So the second stage is bina. Bina is our capacity to take that initial inspirational spark of thought and give it length, breadth, depth, what we call analysis, or what we might say is the process of thinking. So we have the soul of the thought, the spark of the thought, 
And then we have the development of that. And the spark becomes submerged in the process. It's still there or the thought will disappear. You remember the example I gave you? You remember to in the kitchen that you need to get something from the dining room. So you walk to the dining room and you stop still in your tracks. Why? Because you've forgotten what it was that you entered the dining room for. So what do you do? You go back to the kitchen and aha, it comes back to you. Why? When you were in the kitchen in the first place, there was a spark of a thought. You began to develop it and the consequence was movement to the dining room. In the dining room, for some reason, the spark disappeared. The soul left that body. Therefore, you went looking for it back in the kitchen. And yes, of course, you found it there and followed through again. So that's the relationship of Chochmah and Bina, these two steps or stages in consciousness per se. Now comes the third one, and the, th the one that I want to focus on now, Da'at. Da'at is the ability to focus, commit to that particular outcome of the thinking process, where the binner analysis takes you to some conclusion and you focus on that conclusion. Inevitably, when you focus deeply on a conclusion, the result will be it gives rise to an emotion, fuel to make you move. You felt strong enough in the kitchen to make your legs move to the dining room. You needed something. That is because the da'as, the third step, was there in a focused manner. So, coming back to our original discussion, meditation is focusing. And thereby, when we end up focusing on something, our mind moves there. And we are able to remain there the stronger that the focus and commitment to that outcome is. Tonight, the outcomes that we are talking about are the five senses. So let's see how the five senses operate. And I'm going to take you through them one by one in context of our focusing technique. But in passing, I'm going to demonstrate how relaxing it can be by taking your mind off what took place previously and allow yourself the capacity to be able to be in the moment somewhere quite else and give your mind a reprieve from the stressor that might have been activating it adversely and causing harm to the body and many other aspects as well. Okay, so that's by way of preamble. Now let's get ourselves into a comfortable position. Sit with your feet symmetrically on the ground, hands placed on your knees and thighs, and just gently begin to close your eyes. Focus on your breath, gently breathing in and breathing out. Breathe in and out through your nose if you can and bring yourself into the new here and now by focusing on the temperature of the air that enters your nasal passages, comparing it to the temperature of the air that leaves your nose. And you're finding that the air that enters your nasal passages seems to be much cooler than the air that is warmer leaving your nose. Because the body has warmed the air that you now release. Take a deeper breath in and direct it down to your abdomen, <coughs> expanding your abdomen as you collect the air and contracting the abdomen as you 
allow the air to exit what we did in our first session, abdominal breathing. Breathing in, expanding the abdomen, contracting the abdomen to release the air. And make your breathing deep and smooth, graceful, And I want you to bring your focus on your fingers touching the texture of your clothing at this very moment. Feel where the fingers end and the texture begins. Feel the warmth in that interface. Is the texture smooth, very smooth, rougher, bristly? Experience that sense of touch in your fingers. A wonderful source of information. One of our five antennas. If you become subtly aware, you might even feel the blood moving beneath the skin where you're touching with your fingertips. Turn your attention to the sounds in the room where you are currently seated. Subtle background sounds. Sounds you may have been oblivious of but were there all the time. Identify each of those sounds. Bring your focus to your eyes. Your eyes are closed and yet you can see the back of your eyelid. At the back of your eyelid there may be a play of colours patterns strange, shadowy movement.
explore what your eyes see. At the back of your eyelid. Is it real? Or is it your imagination? And of course, recognize how fabulously rich is your eyesight, where your eyes to be open, to be able to take in all the differentiated subtleties of eyesight. Move your focus to your sense of smell. See if you can pick up any scent around you in the room. If not, even imagine a scent, your favorite scent. And you'll be able to simulate it with your sense of smell. And now bring your focus to your tongue and allow the tongue to rub against the back of your teeth and see if you can identify any taste, the sense of taste picked up by your taste buds. any residual tastes from any foods that you had just eaten. Or a default taste of your mouth that you take for granted because it's there all the time. Imagine the variegated, intense tastes of your favorite foods, one by one, allowing your taste buds to simulate these. And in so doing, automatically beginning the salivating process. And just be aware how our exploration of our five senses took you away from where you were before 
and allowed you a reprieve, even an enjoyable experience that will allow you to come back to the here and now with a different frame of mind, more calm, more relaxed. able to make better decision-making. And enjoying life more. Focus again on your breath, breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Noting the temperature difference between the in-breath and the out-breath. Begin moving your fingers and your toes right in the room where you're seated Move your fingers, move your toes, and slowly begin to open your eyes, coming all the way back. How was that? So what have we done during these sessions? We have looked at different ways of moving our mind around, giving ourselves flexibility, at the same time realizing that we have power over our mind. We have power to direct our consciousness. We have the capacity to move away from a stressed state and be able to lighten up, in fact, transform and come back after the exercise in a different frame of mind. And as I've explained to you, much more conducive to better health. And this is what Judaism expects of us, a duty to serve our body well, because the body is, at the end of the day, the um, spacesuit for the soul. The soul finds itself in the rather strange atmosphere of time and space limitation, and it can only operate here through its spacesuit of the body. And only if we can keep the body in optimal shape can the soul express optimally through it. That's why it's a mitzvah. That's why we teach meditation at Spirit Grow. I know that it's not a common teaching in many a Jewish institution, but here we feel very, very strongly that in the world that we live in, we need to be able to maintain a sense of balance, groundedness, in order to operate optimally so that our individual self, the personality we've been given, the soul that inhabits us, can carry out its journey in this lifetime as well as possible. So I'm glad that you've been on this journey with me for these last several sessions. And I look forward to a future occasion when we can be again together and again explore and develop and evolve. I want to wish you, especially in these trying times, equanimity, inner peace, and very importantly, confidence in the future. Nothing is arbitrary. 
everything is designed and purposeful. You will be well, I assure you. But you and I have to practice in order to, to create that vehicle, as I said earlier, for the spiritual blessings to take hold. Much success. Be well.